And joining us now on the line is Jonna Spilbor, who is a legal analyst. You see her all the time on Fox News and other places. She's been following the details of the Zimmerman trial, and she was a guest yesterday. She was so spectacular, we said, we just got to have her come back, because her, her analysis, I think, is, is dead on, right on the money. Jonna, how are you? Well, Brian, thank you. I'm well. How is everybody there? We're doing very well. Okay, so now yesterday there was this testimony about the wounds that were suffered by George Zimmerman. Here's a little snippet of that. They were not life-threatening. Uh, they were very insignificant. Um, they did not require um, any sutures to be applied. All right, that was Dr. Valerie Rao, who was talking about the, the injuries to uh, George Zimmerman. We've seen the pictures, and you know, it sort of looked like he was messed up pretty good. It looked like he'd been in a pretty good fight. But does, does this uh, bolster the, uh, the prosecution's case? It does not. And let me tell you why her testimony was pretty insignificant itself. So under the law in most states, and including Florida, if somebody is presenting a self-defense defense, they do not have to succumb to actual life-threatening injuries. The, the threshold is, did the person have a reasonable belief that he was in uh, peril or imminent bodily harm or that death could ensue? A reasonable belief. The, actual, the injuries do not have to be actual. So while this doctor, Dr. Rao, was testifying that, sure, the injuries were so insignificant they didn't need stitches, I think was part of her testimony, that that doesn't matter as much as what was going through George Zimmerman's head when he was having his head slammed into the concrete uh, curb. Now, so, so it's his state of mind that's at question. Exactly. And, and whether or not he feel, felt threatened. Precisely. And as long as he felt threatened, it doesn't matter that the actual injuries, we know that his actual injuries weren't life-threatening. He, he's alive. He's alive and well. He didn't even have to go to the doctor. But the point is, when you're engaged in a fight, which, which is uncontested, he's in a fight, he's toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trayvon Martin, he's getting his head slammed into something because we see the actual injuries. What was going through his mind at the time is what matters more than how big the gashes were in his head. Or, and let's not forget, he had injuries to the front of his face, too. His nose was either broken or it, w it was hurt. It was pretty jacked up, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, John, a couple of questions about evidence and what's being allowed. Did I see something yesterday uh, about some evidence that uh, some testimony that was then dismissed or the, the jury was asked to uh, disregard? Oh, my goodness. This, w this, I think, is one for the history book. So here's what happened with that. The day before yesterday, when the lead investigator on the case was testifying regarding the video reenactment that he, that he took with George Zimmerman, it, uh, part of the defense uh, questioning of him was, did you think George Zimmerman was credible? Now, that's a fair question in the sense that here's the lead investigator, a man who is trained to determine whether a suspect or person of interest is telling the truth or not. So naturally, Mark O'Mara asks him that question, and the investigator says, yeah, I thought he was credible. I thought he was telling the truth. Well, the prosecution either was asleep at the wheel or wasn't sure whether or not he could object to that question. So they wait until the next day and say, hey, Judge, you know what? We need, we need to go back. Let's press rewind because we really should have objected to that question. It goes to a state of mind, and that's not fair game from, from this witness. And the judge agreed. So even though the jury got to hear it, which is good for the defense, if they ever have to go back and do a read back, that testimony is stricken from the record. Huh. That is, that is, it's crazy because it didn't happen at the time. They got to sleep on it all night. Right. That's what makes that part of this crazy. But they still got a do-over. Huh. Yeah, right. they still got a do-over. So uh, we were talking yesterday, and, and we, I asked you the question about whether or not you saw anything that sort of shook Zimmerman's initial story. And, and our, our general sense of it was that everything that George Zimmerman had said had been sort of, to, to a large degree, been backed up by the evidence that had been presented and then there were questions about whether or not the prosecution team was really doing a very good job what is your and you've been both a prosecutor and a defense attorney what is your opinion of the way the prosecution's handled the case thus far okay so this there's something really interesting going on here and i thought of this uh late last night when i got off the of hannity what the prosecution tried to do yesterday in a very subtle way is the prosecution is now trying to paint george zimmerman as a liar 
And the part that, which I get that, but the part that's interesting about that is that in order to paint him as the liar, the prosecution put in the evidence that he's credible. That's like shooting yourself in the foot. In other words, they put in the videotape reenactment where George Zimmerman comes across as a pretty sensible guy, and now they're trying to pick that apart. Mm -hmm. Why not just not put that into evidence? Well, I, I don't understand the logic or the strategy behind this prosecution at all. I think there's, there's still, I mean, there was no aha moment yesterday, guys. There's, the prosecution is still failing in, in, their, in their presentation of evidence. But to me, it's significant that they put on the evidence that shows George Zimmerman is a, you know, a decent guy, and now they're trying to pick apart their own evidence. Well, That's and nuts. John Spielberg, the other th way they're trying to paint uh, George Zimmerman as this some sort of crazed rent-a-cop who was playing out this police fantasy uh, that night. And uh, apparently they're going to be looking at whether they're allowed to insert evidence. Uh, this, they're going to have a hearing about this today, I think, uh, that he had a job application to a police agency in Virginia and an application for a ride-along with Sanford police officers. Is this relevant? To me, it's absolutely not relevant. And what they're trying to show by they're, not only are they going to show that he wanted to become a cop, they're going to show they want to show that he took classes and was knowledgeable in the law. Um, I think and, and part of part and parcel to that is they also want to show, or they did show, uh, a snippet of an interview that George Zimmerman did with um, Sean Hannity, where George Zimmerman said he had no knowledge of the stand your ground law. So they're, again, they're trying to use that to paint him as a liar. But if you think about what they're trying to do, they're trying to use George Zimmerman's knowledge of the law to somehow loosely string together uh, the belief that because he knew the law, because he wanted to be a cop, because he studied the law, that he somehow created his whole self-defense defense. And uh, that is just too big a leap. Could you imagine if we could hold knowledge of the law against any defendant, then, you know, no lawyer, no judge, no cop would ever enjoy the presumption of innocence, because we all know the law. That's that a great mean point. We're creating our own defenses. Can you point to, and I need a short answer because we're running out of time, as compelling as this has been. I, I, can you point to one thing that the prosecution has scored a point on? Oh, dear. Uh, oh, and I only have a short amount of time. <laughs> I don't... You know, I don't really think they have made any points whatsoever, yeah. except that, you know, they've confirmed that there was a fist fight between Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman, and that's pretty much where the buck stops. Yeah, I mean, that's the way it's sort of looking to a lot of people who are yeah. watching this thing. Well, Jonas Spielborg, thank you so much for joining us. Greatly appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Fourth of July, everyone. Happy Independence Day.